Hey guys, uh, Ben here. Um, I'm trying something a little bit different today in that normally at this point in the video I would cut to a kind of standard visual effects breakdown of all the different render passes and whatnot. Um, but I know a lot of you have been wanting some more kind of tutorial-like content from me. Uh, so while I can't give you a kind of time lapse of creating this shot, I'm, I'm going to kind of give you a bit of a walk through of what the scene looks like in Blender and trying to explain my sort of workflow when it comes to a shot like this. Yeah, so uh, let's get into it. Uh, so this is how the scene looks in Blender in the viewport. This isn't all that is going on in the scene, so there's, there's a bit more to it than meets the eye. Uh, but I'm going to break it down into the different collections here and take a look at each one in turn. Okay, so um, we'll start by taking a look at the kind of center point of the, the shot, which is obviously the uh, raptor here. So if I just hide the background and everything else. This is our raptor model. This is a model I made about a year ago. Some people have asked if there's any kind of complex node setups or anything in the materials. There's not really. It's just the standard principle BSDF shader just with a lot of different maps coming in, which I painted in Substance Painter. You could, you could definitely get similar results in Blender using the built-in texturing tools. That's how most of my previous models have been textured, but the last kind of three or so I've done, uh, I moved over to Substance Painter and I just find it a much faster workflow without having to mess around with nodes all the time. So this is the UV map. Uh, this is the diffuse pass as it uh, came out of Substance. It's 8K resolution. Um, I baked a cavity map out of a high-res sculpt, which was a couple of million polys um, from Blender. And you can see how that's been used to kind of paint in these kind of, I guess it's like kind of a grouting between the scales. I don't know what you'd call that, but the kind of connecting tissue. Uh, the main thing here is just making sure you've got loads of texture variation. So we've got all this, this dirt, this fine detail here, all these spots and everything that just break up the surface so that um, you're not just staring at something flat. That is the biggest killer of photorealism is just a flat surface. And we've, we've got this same detail in the uh, roughness here and in the specular pass. What I also like to do is to have a little metallic pass and to just make the areas around the eyes and the nose a little metallic because it gives them a little kind of bit of wetness without you having to kind of do everything funky shader wise. Uh, there's a little bit of subsurface scattering on this but not a lot because I find if you use too much on kind of a, a reptilian creature you end up with something that looks kind of rubbery as opposed to sort of leathery. The way I'm handling the fine detail here is that I've got a kind of I've got a subsurf modifier we're rendering at three levels, and then I've baked the displacement from the high res sculpt, um, and I'm applying that on top of that, and then the armature on top, and then we've also got a normal map in the shader as well, just to kind of bring out that really fine detail. So there's actually two rigs here. We've got the main armature and then we've got this rig here which handles all the shape keys, which is how I've done the uh, facial animation. So it's a fairly standard rig um, with IK controls of various parts where applicable and also some standard FK controls just for the arms. And also here uh, because this IK handle here doesn't have a target set. Um, you can you can pose it, and then you can use the uh, kind of neck controls to then refine that further. So uh, when I started with this scene, it's obviously based on a fairly iconic shot from the first Jurassic Park, kind of raptors in the kitchen sequence. I started off by just bringing the raptor in and posing it kind of appropriately just as a still. And then I began to block out the lighting first, on just on the Raptor. So if I load up the lighting collection, this is what we've got going on here. You can see we've got a few different lights, but the main ones we're interested in, if I just come out of pose mode, are this key light here, which is providing us with a nice 
sort of rim backlight, kind of looks like sunlight coming through a window, and this overhead light, which is a much cooler light. What Cycles lets us do is put in a specific power wattage and also a black body color temperature value. Um, and I've tried to choose sensible values for this and sensible kind of positions for this based on how they would have lit the film scene. Um, we've also got these flags around here, which is something I've tried to carry over from what I do when I'm lighting a real scene um, in real life on camera. So they're just a big kind of flat black plane. But what they do is they basically cut the light out um, and allow us to refine our shadows and our reflections effectively. There's also, if I load up this foreground scene, there's this floor plane here, which is just providing this um, it's cutting out the, the light coming up from below. So then I started bringing in the background and this is just really, really simple, very basic modeling here. Extremely basic geometry. If we look at this, it's literally just a few cubes and cylinders uh, arrayed over. Nothing particularly fancy with the materials either. Um, the only kind of interesting thing going on shading wise is on the ceiling tiles. I've got procedural speckle texture happening. Yeah, so we've got this kind of procedural foam texture. It's not anything special by any means. It's just a noise texture with some curves plugged in. Um, but it's just enough uh, so that when we defocus this, when we put this out of focus in the background, um, there's some variance. We've got some more lights in the backdrop here. We've got a couple of spotlights coming up through these windows which are casting light on the ceiling, little pools of light on the ceiling. And just to break that up a little bit, I've got these trees on the outside which were generated using the sapling generator add-on. It's literally the default settings for that. No leaves or anything, no material work on them, just placed in the path of the light and then I, uh, in the ray visibility, I've made it so that they only show up for shadow rays, so they're not causing any kind of artifacts. They're not actually visible in the shot. Having put that together, I then basically just animated the camera's movement through the scene, trying to match the, the shot. Uh, you can see in the keyframes at the bottom, um, I've tried to sort of add a little bit of irregularity to the camera movement, just so it doesn't feel too perfect, because obviously the actual shot will have been made with a physical camera on a dolly in a real set and there's going to be kind of imperfections in the way that it was operated and I've tried to kind of get a little bit of that in it just so it doesn't feel too clinical. But having blocked that out, I then blocked out the animation which is just really simple keyframe stuff. So if we go back to the armature, you can see the keyframes here. And uh, all the facial animation was handled with the, the shape keys I talked about earlier. So um, including the little, I think it's nictitating membrane over the eye, which is this little kind of secondary eyelid that reptiles have, which slide over their eye. Um, I think the eye blink is a little bit too fast in this, because you don't really appreciate it when you see it animated. And probably um, I've got a bit too much facial animation going on. It looks a little bit too dog-like, but you know, you live and you learn. Yeah, so that's how I set up the scene, basically. Uh, now, I knew I had a kind of limited amount of time to render this in, because I was going away for the weekend and I wanted it to kind of take exactly the amount of time that I was away for, so I didn't have to sacrifice my computer to the rendering gods while I was uh, trying to work on other stuff. Uh, and the big thing that takes rendering time in this scene is the background because it's it's literally filling the entire frame um, so what i decided to do is a little bit of projection mapping so basically if i hide the foreground and uh, everything else i basically made this little box effectively or kind of quarter of a box i suppose um, and uv projected it from the camera view so if we go to uv mode. I also subdivided it a lot of times otherwise you get tons of distortion. So you can see this is a render I did in cycles of uh, the, the very first frame of the animation and I also rendered the last frame 
and also a wide shot um, of the whole thing. And then in the node setup, I've brought the various different renders together and mixed their alpha together. So then when we render it, we can render it simply as an emission shader like this. And that means we don't have to worry about rendering all the different kind of light paths every frame. We're just rendering an image texture effectively projected it, projected onto a plane. Literally, this is what is rendering in the animation as the backdrop. And that saved a hell of a lot of render time because um, this you can run, you can get kind of a decent background render with some depth of field and all that kind of stuff going on in about 40 samples uh, with motion blur and everything. Whereas the, the actual Raptor I rendered at about 400 samples and it still needed more. I should have given it more, I should have given it a bit of denoising, but that would have taken longer. And uh, I'm extremely impatient and lazy. So yeah, that's pretty much how the scene goes together. I rendered the background separately from the foreground um, and then comped them together initially in Blender, but then of course some, I got, it didn't quite come out right. So I, I, I'd rendered it as a multi-layer EXR, so I was able to bring those layers um, together in After Effects. The only other thing I did for the kind of final comp was it came out a little less shiny than I was hoping to, to. so this is in, in Premiere. So what I did was I took the preview render that I'd done in Eevee, um, which I didn't have proper kind of shadowing and ambient inclusion on, so it was very kind of shiny and glossy looking. And I basically just overlaid that over the actual render set to screen blending mode and that really helped to kind of give it a sort of wetter look especially in the mouth um, so if I just flip between these you can see it's bringing out the kind of specular highlights on the, on the teeth and uh, on some of the scales as well so hopefully you guys uh, found that somewhat useful um, that's how I approach kind of shots like this um, I'm hoping to do more stuff like this in the future. Let me know if you liked it and if, how I can improve it, really. It's probably come across a little bit randomly because it's the first time I've ever done anything like this. But um, yeah, I'm hoping to get more tutorial type content out in the future about how you go about creating kind of a hero asset like this and my kind of workflow when it comes to that. Although that's a little bit trickier because um, my computer doesn't seem to agree with me screen recording while Blender's open, as you've probably seen. So I've got loads of stuff planned for the future, um, and I'll see you in the next video.